Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. Be sure to hit subscribe and hit the bell to receive all notifications because just hitting subscribe doesn't mean anything. All right, so you've got Clip Studio Paint EX or Clip Studio Paint Pro and you wanna know how to get started. And I am here to show you just a few things to get you going. So if you open Clip Studio, it's probably gonna look pretty much like this. Some of the things over here on this right side I've moved, um, I think they might end up by default being over here. You can move those around. So it's probably gonna look something like this, but we'll need to start with a new document. You can go up here to File New or your handy little toolbar up here. Um, and I'll show you some more of this stuff a little bit later. So you've got some options here when you open up. You can use Illustration, Comic, Print of Fanzine, Show All, Comic Settings, and Animation. The only two that I use are Illustration and Animation, even though I'm doing comics. Because if you go in here and I'm doing American, uh, American Comic Size, which is 11 by 17, uh, the entire page, which is a roughly A3. And if you notice, it is not an option here. Now you can go in and do it custom and then you get into doing all these settings. Quite frankly, um, this is too much information. I don't need all this. Uh, this will give you, this can organize, organize by you know author and all this information here. Um, the show all comic settings kind of does the same things. This might be another tutorial when I go in and figure out if uh, how to actually set all these little templates because even though the page is this big right here this interior is going to show the crop settings and stuff this that's a whole nother thing so just to get you going all you really need to do drawing is this i have 11 by 17 at 300 dpi is the resolution if you're doing a black and white comic or illustration that's just line art you might want to go to 600 maybe 400 you can set this just by typing in i could make a really weird number but 300 dpi is is uh, good enough you can set your paper color here so if i want the paper color you can change it later to be red or uh, gray or something i'll leave that normal right there um and then animation animation i have a tutorial on how to get set up with animation if you want to check that out and check that link down in the description but for right now let's just start with a straight up illustration to get going so I've got a basic white paper and these are the brushes that will come with it you've got your uh, G pen so I want to explain some of these the three basic toolbars that are connected to each tool that you'll use once you figure out how this works for the pen you'll be able to apply it essentially to any of these so the G pen is a pretty good pen it comes with it uh, these pens up here are things that I've bought and downloaded these are custom pens don't worry about those right now uh, the G pen I like the real G pen and the mapping pen um, it just depends on your preference but we'll show you how to get this thing set up so you've got your G pen here now if you this is where you can select marker your, your basic pen you're using if you go one in these are the settings where you can get customizable so you can do the size you see up here it's going to change the size the opacity so if you want it to be opaque less opaque you can go in here I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger with my high so if it's the opacity is less it's the right it's gray but once you cross that line it builds it up so it has some uses there um, set this back to 100 now one of the things that can be a little confusing is the aliasing and anti-aliasing now, all it means is how pixelated is the edge. So if I could zoom way in here and I've got it set on no anti-aliasing, you can see this edge right here is very, it's like a very stark, right? So if I make an enclosed, oops, not that one, this one. If I, whoa, <laughs> I forgot how zoomed in I was. So if I make a, a place to like, um, that I want to, let's just make this circle, right? and say I need to, to fill in the, that half of the circle with a color. When I go to fill it in, you'll be able to see that if everything is, is normal, like my paint bucket is, on, is stopping whenever it hits color, it goes right up to the edge, okay? So that is, is a use for that. Uh, when I am drawing, I'm drawing a Cintiq, um, a Wacom Cintiq. I also use this on uh, Surface Pro, and on Surface Pro I actually end up using a little bit of aliasing just because of some of the differences in the way it feels. 
but you can use this with any kind of tablet I mean, you could use it with a mouse too um, just your whatever your whatever you've got you so let's do uh, a lot strong aliasing just to really show you what this does so if you go in here you can already see it kind of grays this out it has more of a softer more maybe natural feel to it not as pixelated, which you're going to run into if I need to fill in that later, and you'll be able to see, even if I fill it in with black, you see how much line that leaves because it's stopping whenever it hits any level of gray. So you can get around that, obviously, if you just um, go in here to a different setting with the paint bucket, but I just want to show you what that does. I'll, I'll get to the paint bucket in just a minute. So that's what anti-aliasing does, and you have a few settings. You have none which I usually use, I might use weak. I just have to take into account when I do fills. And there's a tutorial I have for fills, the easy way that you'll run into that with. I'll link that in the description as well. So that's what that does. Stabilization, now here's something that will come in kind of handy if you uh, are used to drawing traditionally with a pen and you get, you get into here and you're like, well, when I draw here, it doesn't, like my lines don't seem as, as a, uh, as smooth right so I'm gonna do this you see it's got a little bit of a wobble to it if I do a curve like right see so it comes down here and it kind of dips there and goes in that's part of the, the thing is by hand if I do this you you've got a glass and a computer interpreting the movement and even though you may go perfectly good arc and that's pretty good but it's even got some wobble there if I did that with a pen a pencil or a pen on paper it would have been a lot smoother so this is to kind of make up for that what I usually do is I usually set it around 20 something around 22 is good and you can see that's already smoother than that you got that little wobble there there's none there you could go all the way up to a hundred but the problem is at a certain level you see that lag yeah that's smooth but it's not really all that different than in the 20s but it gets really old with your line trailing behind you. So set it down to round, you know, play with it somewhere in the middle. The slider in the middle is good. So this is what you've got uh, with your basic pin tool. It's enough to get you going. Now, uh, the third box over here is just a quick, easy access size tool, but you can do that up here. If you have hotkeys, you can assign keys on your tablet to do that as well. So I usually don't go there. Um, but every tool, so we'll get down here to the paint bucket tool. Every tool has those same things. You can use the paint bucket tool. And this is just telling it, I never, ever really change this. So we can refer to all layers, close and fill. I'm, I just leave it for basic purposes. I just leave it right there. But again, now I've got that familiar looking thing here, opacity. Uh, we've got closed gap. Now what that means is if I go down here and I got my aliasing off and I draw something, but there's a little bit, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap. Close gap, let's see where I'm at. I'm at 20. So any, it's gonna click up. See, it filled that in. If I do, what if I do zero? If I do zero. Use when you're filling in areas, but you know there might be a little pixel or two gap, it'll fill, it'll fill that in. Now, Another thing with the paint bucket too, like we just did with the anti-aliasing, and I'll show you that real quick. We'll do a, uh, a weak, we'll do a mid middle anti-aliasing. Right? So if I just do straight up here, it's not, you see this area scaling? See, it's still leaving that one or two pixels worth of gray. Now I can, if I make this expand, it's gonna basically ex expand that fill area by however many pixels. And here that's enough. So that's an option if you if you like the line with aliasing, just know you'll have to adjust your paint bucket scaling tools. Um, and multiple referring is another, I, will, I won't go over that here because I have another video that I that is down in the description about the, it's uh, filling, flatting comics the easy way. Uh, I think that's what it's called, something close to that. I'll link to it. But uh, I covered that there if you want to know a very quick way and what that all layers means. But just to get you going, the other thing that will be a big help, and you've got all these tool line tools, let you choose which line, and then let you choose, oops, uh, once you've got the line that you want, you can adjust that line, you can make it tapered. So 
tool properties lets you adjust the tool and then the sub tool lets you adjust which tool you're using. That's pretty much the same for all these, right down to the eraser. Um, now, the, only, the other thing that you'll need to know is layers. Now this is set up pretty much like Photoshop. So this is your paper. This is typically how when you set up a drawing it's gonna look. The paper is the background and then you can start adding layers on top. So if I was going to draw something in pencil and get it laid out, so I'm gonna do like a face, a really quick looking face, and this is my pencil layer. I'm just using a red pencil, one of my custom tools. And so I, I have the eyes laid out, I can do my, my construction lines and get everything all laid out in an ear, right? And then what I can do is I wanna ink on top of that. I would add layer, new raster layer, on top of that and what I would do is go back I can switch back and forth between these layers and I can make that opacity just take it down so it's a little lighter and then choose an inking tool and then I'm gonna go over top of that and do my inking with this smug looking cartoony guy so once I get that done and I'm gonna leave a little bit of just color them in real quick here just to go through and this will be the last thing for this video more will be coming um, so I want to color him in I'm gonna take away that that uh, pencil layer just I just hide it uh, that little eye here makes things visible or hides them and if I hit if I go below the main layer because I want to keep that line art on top because I want the black to sit on top of it if I've clicked below it and I hit wherever I whatever layer I'm on it throws the new layer on top of and so now what I'm going to do is I'll just um, I'll just pick a color and I'll color underneath them real quick. I'll just even do it in uh, just to show you. Obviously, you do it a little more refined than this. We'll give him kind of orangey hair. Now filling those in, and that sits. If I take away the line art, that's sitting on the layer underneath. So that is the basics of how you draw. You've got your pencil. You've got your ink. You've got your color layer, and just and you can move these around, but remember that you want typically your line art on top and the color below that. So this should be enough to help you get going. There'll be more tutorials as I go. If you have any specific questions, please uh, leave a, a comment below. Let me know what types of things that you're trying to figure out that I can help with, and I will see you next time. Be sure to hit subscribe and the bell for notifications and share the link around. Thanks.